We're in Nags Head, North Carolina, and we're gonna perform a home inspection on a house on the beach. So let's go have some fun. So before we perform the inspection, I just wanna take a look around at the property itself. Looks like the, the vacationers are here at the beach house. The RV is parked in the driveway. A um, Couple of questions. Is there a deck on the house? Is there a, a walkway? Is there a dune? Is there a walkway over the dune? How close are we to the shoreline? So it looks like we have a deck and it's an uncovered deck. There's a bit of a second floor balcony. So uncovered decks are treated a little bit differently according to the size of the piles, the columns, the posts. And I think I saw a couple heat pumps on the left side of the house. The roof looks like it's in good shape. Looks like the, there's been some repairs to the deck too and the railing is new and the condition of the dune is good with some warning signs. Okay, so let's start from underneath where the, the underside of the deck structure and the house structure is. So just some tips about North Carolina. North Carolina has its own building code, residential building code. It's based on upon the IRC, International Residential Code. And then the code, there's a chapter on decks. And in relation to pilings, the columns or posts of the decks. You can have round timber piles, not less than eight inches in diameter at the building level and um, a six inch uh, tip. And square timbers, uh, square timber piles should be at least eight inches square. For supporting um, uncovered decks, uh, walkways, uh, stairs, um, the pile should be at least six by six. And I see that around the perimeter. If seals, beams, or girders are attached to the piling, a minimum of two five eighths inch galvanized steel bolts per beam member shall be through bolted at each connection. So I'm gonna take a look at that. If a pile is notched, it shouldn't be notched more than 50%. And all metal connectors and fasteners outside of condition spaces, like at the deck, must be hot dipped galvanized steel because salt spray in coastal environments and the chemicals in the preservatives that are used to treat wood can both contribute to the corrosion of metal fasteners. So this is my big concern when I'm underneath a deck on the coast. Preservative treated lumber, which is commonly used in many buildings, requires special attention when selecting connectors and fasteners. In relation to roof anchorage, because we're on the coast, every roof rafter or truss shall be anchored to the bearing wall. And at the roof ridge, the rafters must have a, a collar beam, a collar tie, or a wind beam. So those are a few tips that I keep in mind when inspecting in North Carolina on the coast. So I'm just gonna grab my measuring tape and this is the supporting the house, right? So this is um, not the surrounding deck. So we're good here with these square piles. Now, if we go to um, the exterior perimeter, you've got the uncovered deck or stairs or walkways. And so those are six by sixes. And so you can judge it with your eye. You really don't have to uh, use a measuring tape. But what I do is I use a measuring tape and then I'll um, take a picture that I used it. So I see six by sixes, square piles, eight by eights for the house. And uh, that's it, looks good. So now it's the fasteners. And it looks like the deck has been repaired in the past. There's some newer fasteners and some older fasteners. And I'm concerned about the condition of the fasteners, right? So we've got these. These fasteners look newer and they're in good shape. And how do I inspect them? It's only a visual home inspection, it's visual only. But sometimes you can tap it with a screwdriver, a small hammer, uh, a stick, um, but uh, sometimes you get the sledge out. And I just tap it. It's silly, right? Sledge, you don't need a sledge. Okay, so you see that? So the material is actually falling off. Structural material of the fastener 
is falling off. I know, it's silly, right? Sledgehammer. So some of the fasteners are a concern for me and I'm going to put that in my inspection report. Ah, so visual inspection. So this is the um, doorway overhead beam for pulling in your car underneath the house. And they have uh, a double two by 12 with a steel I-beam in the middle. And that I-beam is corroded just like those fasteners. And it has um, delaminated, uh, flaked, um, separated, you can tell. So that's a concern. That's a load bearing beam above me here and behind me. And uh, the fasteners um, around the perimeter of the deck have been replaced, that's good. But the fasteners, the through bolting um, is a concern. And it looks like the fasteners on the outside piles have actually been replaced. So they cut out the old ones and put in some new ones. This is a nice condition. These are a concern. Right now, I'm gonna document my observations, recommend further evaluation, and uh, we've got some problems though, for sure. Some of the fasteners are simply falling apart, and this I-beam is falling apart due to corrosion. Okay, let's do some detailed pictures of some of the components and keep moving on. So code, we're not a code inspector, but it requires two through bolts. There's one missing. Looks like uh, they took the old one out, then put in a new one. So defect. And it looks like this isn't even, I don't know what's going on here. And it looks like it was repaired here because of a crack, but it's not through bolted. This is a concern for me at this corner, front left corner of the house, defect. Another structural concern is the support, load bearing support for the heat pumps. There's two heat pumps and load bearing support. There's a bit of a, a movement and separation of this corner here. Looks like some nails have completely missed. The lag bolts are pulling through. There's some separation and some settlement. Bit concerned about these heat pumps and how they're being supported. There's a little bit of a weakness right there. Defect. And while I'm here at the heat pumps, I don't like how they're being fastened down. This fastener is completely gone. So in a storm or a surge, you want these things to be secured to the house. You don't want them floating around and moving around. It's not safe. So securing them. So we need further investigation on that. So whenever there's a renovation or repair on a house, especially the roof, sometimes the structure, the nails are in the sand and uh, that's not good. They need to get a rake out here and some magnets or something and clean up. You don't want barefooted occupants stepping on rusted nails like this. Not safe. So taking a look at the stairs of this roundy deck and the front stair has a hazard um, at my foot here. You can tell that somebody can walk around the corner, take the inside corner a little tight and fall about two feet. So that's a safety hazard. Something needs to be done here. It's not my uh, position as a home inspector to recommend how to fix this hazard. It's just a safety hazard. So somebody could miss the step and break their leg. So at the connections, the fasteners need two through bolts, at least five eighths an inch thick. There are missing through bolts here. I only see one, so that's a defect. So the guards, they're in question because um, can't have a four inch sphere pass through the spindles of the guards, but look, the guards are made out of wire. You can go right through. It's large enough for a child to fall through. It's larger than four inches defect. The roof is new.
I like the flashing installed around the skylights. I'll take a look at the skylights on the inside. And the siding seems to be in good shape. I don't see any major problems with the siding or the shingles or the roof. Older heat pump unit, second floor unit, main floor, living room floor, first floor. Um, automatic sprinkler to clean off the systems. Um, they probably are timed for the middle of the night. Refrigerant lines, insulated, that's nice. Two electrical shut-off switches, that's good. I can see indications of a lost seal, fogged window panes. Rear receptacle is loose. That's no good. Some live wires up in there. Old light fixture, I guess. There's a settlement crack in the driveway. I'm not concerned about that at all. Outdoor water fixtures. Hose bibs are good. There's a shower at the door. The spring is broken. That's pretty minor. The shower itself, hot, cold. It's common to have the condensate drain from the heat pump right into the shower. Some plumbing lines are exposed. Slopes down into the main sewer line. There's water lines, drainage lines, heat pump, some missing insulation there on the heat pump refrigerant line, some electrical lines going into the house. Electrical panel is probably right there. And gas line supplying the stove. Inside the lower utility room. They had a water leak here. I'm not sure, I think that was the kitchen upstairs. I was in the first floor there. So there was a water leak. Um, it looked like it leaked down on the wall here. They took down the drywall. So that needs to be insulated and covered up again. But the problem is um, they didn't remove that. So there's mold there. So they should remove that building material. It's difficult, but that's what they should do. And then there's the water lines and valves. There's the heat pump there and the electrical panel. But over here is the hot water tank. TPR extended through, but I'll have to find where that goes. Really should be conspicuous. Maybe it's outside. Should be discharging in the same room and it's wet and leaking. Um, cold water coming in, hot water coming out, and the electric come from the panel itself. But there's an open junction box, open junction, sorry, electrical junction, above the hot water tank. Let's see, it's right there. And those are live wires, not inside a junction box. Defect. Clothes washer, dryer, dryer, exhaust outside. It's electric, clothes washer, receptacle, should be GFCI, water lines, drain pipe on a good base. And there's the dryer exhaust on the outside. Let's take a look. And it's louvered, so we don't want this. This is a defect, this could clog. So taking a look for that discharge pipe, I noticed that um, it's leaking water. So the drain is capped, which is not good indication, and it's also leaking water. And it looks like it was submerged underwater for a long time. There's rust, there's actually water line, and maybe the heating element is damaged. So this is a defect at the hot water tank. Inside the utility room is electrical panel, main panel, main disconnect. It's labeled identified 200 amps. The circuit directory is um, incomplete. Um, there is no room, uh, there's no GFCIs, no AFCIs. Um, and the labeling is uh, inadequate. They're writing on the wall and it's missing some, some panel screws. So further evaluation on that. And then the heat pump unit, here's one of them. We saw that drain pipe in the outdoor shower, dryer, refrigerant line, 
it's uh, cool to the touch and this is warm unit is operating got some air filters there duct work looks okay I'll take a look at the other unit here's the heat pump thermostat electronic there's another thermostat upstairs second thermostat for the second unit upstairs air filter location for the second floor unit attic access inspection restriction I asked the homeowner to make that accessible but it is not so it's above this double bed so I'll take a look at representative number of receptacles I'll open and close the doors I'll look for and test the smoke detectors carbon monoxide detectors the railing is a defect um, the space between the spindles is large enough for a child to fall through so that's an issue and while I'm here on the second floor I can see some water marks from a prior water leak at the skylight So the second floor slider door doesn't work. It needs an adjustment at the lock. That's that fogged window pane, lost seal. And there's been some signs of water intrusion and dampness coming in on the interior side of the window. On the inside of the house near this floor register, um, there's a GFCI receptacle, but I can't get my tester in. and. Uh, it looks like it tests manually, but I can't get it in to test, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Indications of water intrusion at the rear door. So the water marks on this window here are damp, according to the moisture meter. And every kitchen inspection is the same. You run hot and cold water, look for plumbing leaks, run the dishwasher, short cycle, heat up the stove and the oven, turn on the microwave, fan and light, and then test the GFCI receptacles. Take a look at the floor area and the ceiling and the countertops and the cabinets. There's the refrigerator. And there's a couple bathrooms in the house, in the beach house. And uh, each bathroom is inspected just about the same. Flush the toilet a couple times, try to move it on the base, see if it wobbles and, and uh, look for plumbing leaks. And then run hot and cold water at the bathroom sink and look for leaks and then turn on the tub, hot and cold water, and the shower, and then flush the toilet again and see how the water flow is, see if it's functional, adequate. Um, take a look at the tub drainage and the sink drainage, look for plumbing leaks at the drain pipes, and then test the GFCI receptacles and check out the floor and the ceiling and the fan exhaust and the doors, and then take a look around for loose cabinets or anything else. So um, that's what we'll do in this bathroom. This is one of my favorite things to do. I like to hang the monster free hanger. I check these things, especially under the bed and behind the dresser and in the closet. And it goes right here. So now that room is monster free. I don't think I'm gonna see anything on my infrared. It's cool, 72 degrees ambient temperature on the inside. It's about 91 degrees on the outside. So I'll take a look around at my infrared camera, see if I see any anomalies. So that's what I'm looking for.
So that's the home inspection on this house at the beach in Nags Head, North Carolina. We had a few defects, a few concerns. Those structural supports, those fasteners, they're corroded. That load bearing I-beam um, is a concern. The hot water tank is a defect and a few other things around the house. But uh, the focus of my inspection always at the coast is the structure and those fasteners and how the house is supported and how the roof is secured down. Um, there is that inspection restriction. We couldn't get into the attic. I'd really like to come back and do that for my client. But my report will focus on the major defects of the home that we inspected and found for our client today. Well, that was a home inspection. My work is done. Now I think it's time to go for a swim. It's a beautiful day. I'll see you at the next home inspection. My name is Ben Gramico. I'm from Internachi, the International Association of Certified Home Inspectors. And we just performed a home inspection at the beach.